with all that has happened over the last two plus years now and all the upheaval and the stops and starts and not having a season last year and all that, what do you think has enabled this program to stay at the top all the way through that to now? Yeah, um, you know, just speaking from personal experience, I think that the people in the community here are like absolutely amazing. So whether it be, you know, we have a season, we don't, we're still that, that tight knit community where people want to be a part of this family. Um, and, you know, I was actually, we have like a buddy system and, and we share rooms on the road with our buddy. And for my name is Katie Thiers, who's a freshman from Seattle, Washington. And last night she said how she never met the team, like her team's never seen her play. And she like decided to just like go for it and take a leap of faith and commit to Princeton because, you know, she really liked the people um, over the Zoom meetings. And she said it was the best decision she's made and she has no regrets whatsoever. And, you know, that could be just from the excitement of, of this weekend with the Ivy League tournament play. But I think it just speaks to like our team um, and our community, the people in it, that, you know, you just want to be around them um, and you want to be a part of this community. Hi, Jen Hadfield with the next, um, either for Abby or Julia or both of you, really. Um, what, what was it like walking in the gym today? Did it feel like deja vu because you were just here? Um, and then can you talk a little bit about how you spent the week? I know that you guys, um, you know, stayed here for the week. Can you talk about, you know, what you've been up to and, and how you've kind of gotten ready for, for this? Um, yeah, it is a little weird. Uh, we have this kind of back to back with the week in between. Um, but I think we spent the week obviously practicing. We were here um, for the whole week up in Boston just because we're off uh, Princeton for spring break. So, you know, we've been taking the time to practice and we have a lot of film, obviously. I'm playing at Harvard very recently. So, we spent a lot of time watching film, kind of taking up some things that we needed to work on from, from the last matchup. Um, so, we'll be ready for, for tomorrow. But this week, we've kind of just been spending a lot of time together in the hotel. We, Traveled around Boston a little bit, got to see do some things. A lot of our coaching staff is from around here, so they were our guides for the week. Um, but yeah, just just focusing on this weekend, we got to practice at a few different schools um, and just get ready for that game tomorrow. Rob Brown, Ivy Hoops Online. This is for either Julia or Abby. So, so you guys have had a really great season. You've dominated the league, and you're in that uh, enviable position of, of, you know, you're a team that's going to go to the NCAA tournament, whether that's an automatic or an at-large uh, bid. Um, I guess my question is, one, what's the value for this tournament, and what is the motivation to have to defeat teams for a third time in a 26-hour period? And so it's just, you know, to prove to not only ourselves, but, you know, people that we're still a really, really, really good team and we know how to play the spotlight. And I think this is just an exciting time. You know, Coach said it's her first time at the tournament. And at least for me, it's it's been three years since 20, 2018, four years. So, um, yeah, there's just a lot of excitement around it, but it's a matter of, you know, we were prepared, we watched film, and we're confident and ready to play and go out there and, and you know, the spotlight and perform. Yeah, I think like what Abby was saying, just the atmosphere and this, the tournament atmosphere is going to be really big for us. Obviously, we want to make a run into postseason and be playing seasons in March. So I think getting this experience, you know, playing against hopefully you know one very competitive team tomorrow, and then hopefully on Saturday another competitive team. Um, you know, we're going to take that and we're going to take everything we can from this experience and hopefully take it with us through March. So I think that's probably going to be the big big play. Any other questions for our student athletes? No. No. Any other questions for coach, please? Thanks. Jonathan Tannenwald from the Philadelphia Inquirer. I'd ask you the same question that I asked Abby, you know, 14 and 0 in, in 2020, and then it all stops. And now to be here in the tournament and able finally to back up another 14-0 record after all that's happened 
since what was your first season? You know, to what do you attribute the ability to stay at the top with such consistency and success? Hi, Carla. I'll just, oh, <laughs> that's really loud. Um, I'll just be really basic here. Um, can you share some keys to the game tomorrow? And then also, you know, how are you talking about or not talking about uh, perhaps the pressure of coming in undefeated in the conference? Yeah, uh, we certainly don't talk about being undefeated. You know, it, this is the next sort of goal of ours, right? The, the first goal was to, to, to win the Ivy League regular season. I think the next goal was if we could do it, like do it undefeated. Um, and now it's the Ivy League Tournament Championship. Um, and so, at, you know, we're certainly not talking about being, being undefeated. We're just talking about, okay, we've got Harvard ahead of us. And this is a very, very good team um, at their house. You know, they're, a lot of their fans, I'm sure. So it's going to be just a great challenge, um, especially because we just played them days ago. Um, there was a lot to learn from our game. Um, and hopefully, as I said, like worked out some some kinks and, and hopefully um, we can put together a great 40 minutes. Great three point shooting team. They certainly are offensive rebounding uh, the ball very very well. Uh, they have got you know just some great skilled players um, that you know at some points can just take over games. And you, you don't want that to happen. Um, and uh, yeah, we need to be ready to to play great 40 minutes of of defense, be able to execute really well. Um, you gotta make shots, I think, to, to win the game. So just you know, working on that that execution. Yeah, looking looking forward to the challenge. Um, David Tannenwald with Harvard Magazine. Um, I appreciated the shout out to Boston. Um, and I was reading a little bit about your high school career and winning state championships and I think your senior season was the same year that Madeline Blaze followed the Amherst High School team for In These Girls, Hope is a Muscle. And I once mentioned this book to Kathy and she talked about how she recruited some of those players. It occurred to me you might've known them from AAU ball or something like that. Um, so I was wondering if you could sort of talk about, you know, almost 30 years later, you know, maybe just first of all, like your relationship with Kathy a little bit, but also on the 50th anniversary of Title IX, like sort of what this kind of event means for women's basketball and the growth of the game. Camila Weidman was one of my best friends. Jen Perso is still one of my very best friends. So literally like the two main characters in the in that book were, yeah, they were really good friends of mine. Really, really awesome book too. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was it was the same year. Um, they were the Amherst Regional was Division One. We were Division Two, small town, Oxford, and Central Mass where I'm from. Um, and yeah, I, I think that that Kathy recruited me a little bit. Um, <laughs> I think that at that point, you know, the Ivy League uh, women's basketball wasn't quite what it is today. So I think um, I was looking a little bit, a little bit bigger. Although I don't think UConn was very big at that point either. But um, yeah, I've always just admired um, everything that Kathy has done um, here. When I was just, you know, five miles away at, at Topside, you know, I got to know her 
um, a bit. I would be in here during all of her um, summer camps, trying to recruit her for sloppy seconds, right? Like, <laughs> who don't you want, Kathy? Let me know. Um, but you know, I just, I just learned. I think she's just, um, she's just all about relationships and bringing a, like a really incredible sense of humor to it all too. And and I just marveled at that because I. I was a really shy kid growing up in sort of my first years and um, and how do you how do you manage all that? I think she does it like just gracefully um, with her, you know, a really thick Boston accent and um, just yeah, really enjoy getting to know her and and, 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 and see how you can be a, a successful working working mom and um, at, at a prestigious you know, university like like Harvard and um, she's done so much for the game of women's basketball for uh, you know gender equity and, and um, she's a true just trailblazer in, in this um, um, in this profession so we owe a lot to, to Kathy and um, you know I said at the beginning of the season I feel so fortunate to be coaching on the same sideline you know with her during her, her last season I guess two questions. One, the simple is, is, did this season meet expectations or exceed expectations? And the other is, could you talk about Ellie Mitchell and Caitlin Chen and what they've been doing this season? Sure. Um, you know, I, I wasn't quite sure what to expect from this season, having like a full year away. Um, you know, I think we, we had the goal of, of, of winning the Ivy League. Um, we had the goal of getting a really tough non-conference schedule to get us prepared for the Ivy League. I think we accomplished that. You never know how teams are gonna be that you're gonna play, but um, they ended up being a lot of really solid, uh, tough teams. And I think that really prepared us for, for the Ivy League challenge. Um, so uh, it was hard. I don't think I had like big, big expect expectations. You know, losing a, a Carly Littlefield and a Bella Allery, you just don't quite know. And, and um, the way that, that Abby Byron stepped up and. Uh, you know, our junior class, um, it's, just, it's been awesome. Julia, Grace Stone, Maggie Connolly, um, they've just been, been awesome. Um, and then you've got a, you know, a young player like Caitlin Chen. Um, so this is her first year of, of college basketball. We had her, you know, at, at Princeton um, during the spring semester of, of, 20, of 21, um, but there was only a few of them there. This was like her real first taste and she's, um, She's just really, you know, blossomed a lot. Um, you know, taking over the reins of the of the team at the, the point guard position. Um, she works extremely hard, watching film in practice, outside of practice. And she um, she just wants to be great. She puts the time in. Uh, and Ellie Mitchell, you know, I'm really happy for her to get the defensive player of the year. You know, never takes a play off. Is always diving on every loose ball and rebounding. Uh, you know, all the time. And, um, yeah, she's she just makes an impact on the on the court on every um, on every possession. Um, so been, two of them have been um, you know Ellie, Ellie had a, a year with us, and, but I think she's just her game is you know, she's taken it to another another level. I think we have time for one more question. If there are any, uh, we're done. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, coach. Okay, Appreciate yeah. time. Good luck tomorrow. Thanks.